your victory. I'm going to see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. So good morning, everybody, and welcome to Carmel Mountain Christian Church. We're doing something a little bit different today than we would do normally because of what's going on with the coronavirus that everybody knows about. We're not supposed to be assembling with more than a few people, and we have that going on here at Carmel Mountain Christian where we would have to assemble, and there's definitely more than the number of people who are allowed according to what the state says. So we're going virtual, everybody. And actually, I'm going to be giving my message today to an empty room, which is very, very uh, new for me. Now, it's not totally empty because my, my main man, Rail, is here, who is our sound engineer and all that stuff. So through his faithfulness, he's here. So he's going to get to hear the message a few times. But before I get started, I want to talk about what we need to do here at church, which is... The church building is still here, and we still have to pay rent. We still have people who are on staff who are here who must be paid, and on and on. You get the message that the church is this building, and we do have bills that have to be paid that are going to happen, regardless of the virus, whether we're down for three weeks or whatever it is that the government is telling us, our bills are going to continue on. Well, why am I saying that is because I'm getting ready to pray for our offering, because we need you people to continue to be faithful, to pay your tithes, pay your offering, and just send them in, send them in electronically. You can do that by going to our webpage, which is at www.carmelmountainchurch.com, and right up at the top, you'll see a little drop-down menu, and in there, you can give and just give your normal tithes and give your normal um, your offering. We need everyone to do that and to remain faithful in that as we continue to try to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only here to our community, but also San Diego, the country, and the world. So I'm going to take a minute right now. I'm going to go ahead and pray for our offering, and then I'm going to get into my message for today. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are in a different time, a time that we've never known here in the United States, God, where everything seems to be shutting down. But Heavenly Father, God, we know that this building that we're in right now is not the church, but the people are the church. And so, God, I just pray for the people who are listening to me right now, Lord. I pray for this offering that we're about to take. I pray, God, that they would go ahead and take the extra step and do it. go ahead and send their offering in, God, and their tithes, Lord, as they would normally to keep the operation of the church going. We pray your blessing, Heavenly Father God, during these times of stock market crashes and on and on, God, that we would not panic, Lord, but we would just have our faith in you would increase. So I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, over, and I speak over our finances, God. I speak life over them and not death that we see so much in the news, God. I pray life into our finances that they would continue and we would be enrichly blessed. I also pray for the tithes and offering, Lord, that are coming in and will continue to come in, God that you would bless them, Heavenly Father. You would bless the gift. We pray, God, that you would bless the giver. And, Lord, that we would be able to continue to do our ministry in this time and in this place in San Diego, California. We love you and we bless you and we thank you, God, for the opportunity to even give. These and many other blessings we ask it, God, in the precious and holy name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Uh, we're in a series called Our Father, but given what has happened this past week and the trauma that I feel like our country is under right now, it's almost like our country is underneath some sort of a cloud. And the cloud that seems to be over our country right now, I honestly feel that other countries have had these types of calamities, these kinds of diseases, and these kinds of things before. 
And so their reaction to it may be a little bit different than ours is as Americans because we've never really had any experience like this. And so I feel like something is definitely happening. Something is not only happening in the physical, in the carnal sense, but something is also happening in the spiritual realm. And so today, as I'm giving my message today, I'm going to move away from what I was doing uh, in the series, Our Father. And I'm going to give a special message today because I believe that we're living in a special time right now. And I know without a doubt that the more calamity, the more problems, the greater the problem seems to us, the more and the mighty our God will show up. And he is on top of what's going on right now. And today I want to encourage you that no matter what it looks like when you're standing in the line and you can't even get something simple as toilet paper. And as time goes on, people are going to begin to react different ways to what they see in this new thing, this new thing that's happening with this pandemic. We as Christians have got to stand on what we know and stand on the solid rock, which is in Jesus Christ. But I also think that something is happening, and it's happening in the spiritual realm. And I'm going to be talking about that today, and I'm sure that as you're listening to me this morning, you're going to agree that yes, because I'm going to put together some of the things that I know that you've heard, and hopefully I'm going to prophesy over you, and God has spoken to me about what it is that he's doing and what it is that he's up to. So the title of my message this morning is called Be Still. Now, be still. Normally when we hear be still, it's usually an adult talking to some child. Right, so you have the picture in your head, you've got some child who's busy, as children are. They're touching stuff, they're running around, and they are doing that. They don't care where they are. They could be in the church, they could be in the store, they're taking down candy, they're messing with stuff, and the parent will come to them and look at them and go, listen, will you just be still? And you know good and well that a child will repeat the same thing over and over and over again. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. Are we? Will you just be still? I think actually that the same thing happens in our relationship with God. We are busy, busy, busy. Got to get up and go do this, God. Got to go and do this, God. God's like, come here, I need to talk to you. Can't do it, God. Got to do this. Got to do go here. Got to talk to this one. Got to go to my job. Got to do this. Oh, I got a grocery shop, God. And then when we want our downtime, we don't want our downtime with God. We want our downtime in front of the television. And God, which is noise, and God is saying, shh, just be still. Sit still. Be still. I got that scripture, be still, from Psalm 46, verses 10 and 11. And since you're at your house and in your comfort of your own living room, I'm going to give you a second because you really should take notes. I'm going to give you some scriptures. I'm going to give you some points. And you're not here for me to hand it out and for me to hand it out and give it to you. But in this time period, I believe that God is speaking and is going to speak in a way that he never has before, and we ought to be taking note of it. So those of you who are journaling, I would say take out your journals and go ahead and let's journal what I'm saying. Those of you who are taking notes, then write it down, get some paper, and know what it is that we're talking about today. Psalm chapter 46 Verses 10 and 11 goes like this. He says, that's God, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. There's no question about what God is saying there. He's not going, hmm. Do I need you? Would you guys like to be quiet? Would you like to keep going? Or what? No. It says to be still. And when you're still and you're quiet, then you will know that God is God. 
And again, as I said before, in all our busyness, busy, 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 we don't take time, our Father, to recognize who God is and what he is in our life. Sometimes we just have to sit back and we have to be still as God is commanding us to do. Number one that I want to note with you, I have five things that I want to talk about and note with you. So number one in your notes is this. There are times when God wants us to be still. I believe that this is one of those times. One more time. There are times when God wants us to be still. Stop what we're doing. And because he gave that to us as a commandment to be still and know that he is God, if we don't do it, then he has to put something in effect to make us sit down and be still. I believe that that is what is happening right now with the coronavirus. Stay with me now. Because of the coronavirus, the government is shutting everything down. Let me give you an idea right now. Today, as you're listening to me, these are, and I'm not going to list everything that has been shut down. I'm just going to give you a sample. But you already know. The schools are shut down. They shut down the NBA. They shut down the National Hockey League. They shut down Major League Baseball. Flights are being canceled, and the airlines are slowly, little bit by little bit, getting shut down. The churches are shut down. You can't even go to Disneyland. Broadway is shut down. And almost any public venue that you can think of is being shut down. Now, what I want to do is I want to compare that with what I have heard. And I heard it last year, and I certainly have been hearing it this year. I have heard so many prophecies and so many talking this year about in 2020, how we the church, we the prophets, we the people have to have 2020 vision because God is going to do something in 2020 that he's never done before. Anyone out there ever really heard that? I know you have. You've heard me say it. I hear it all the time among the prophets and the preachers that something is going to happen in 2020 that has never happened before and God is going to move. Well, did you all know that God's ways and our ways are not the same. So while we're thinking that there might be this great 2020 revival that's going to happen in one of the big stadiums in the world and 100,000 Christians are going to come together and we're going to come together for two, three days and sing and shout and then revolutionize the world and revolution. I don't see it happening like that right now because of this thing with the coronavirus, even though I still agree with that prophecy that 2020 is going to be a great year and a great year of the Lord. It just didn't happen in the way that we thought it would. And I'm about to tell you why. Number two, write this down in your notes. What the world sees as a pandemic Christians must view it as an opportunity. I'm going to say that again. What the world sees as a pandemic, Christians must view it, should be viewing it as an opportunity. Hmm. What do you mean, preacher? Romans 8, 29. That's Romans 8. In 29, and you know it. And do we not know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and call according to their purpose? <coughs> Excuse me. And do we know that all things, do you know it? That all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Do you know that? Do you believe that? So even in the midst, and I think we're really on the cusp, this the beginning of some of the things that are happening, are you still willing to stand up and see and be able to see somewhere 
somehow how God is going to take what's going on and tra change it and make it for our good. I'm going to give you a couple of ideas of how God can do that and what he's doing. The question is, what good can possibly come from the force shutdown that we have, that we see happening right now? Number three in your notes. I'm going to answer my own question. Number three, shutdowns will force Christians to be still and know that he is God. Number three, shutdowns will force Christians to be still and know that he is God. If I were to ask you, are you a busy person? Almost unanimously, everybody considers themselves busy. I'm busy doing this. I'm busy doing that. I got to go here. I got to take care of the kids. I got to run them over here. I got to go to my job. Got to do my shopping. On and on and on. There's really not that many people who would just say, yeah, I'm not that busy. All of us consider and think that we're busy. During this shutdown, some of your things that you think are busy are going to be taken away from you, and you are not going to be busy doing those things that you think have made you busy in the past. That's part of what is going to happen with this sh shutdown that's going to happen is sometimes that you didn't have before or oh, you're going to have the time now so the question that's before you today and the question that's going to be before you in the weeks to come is what are you going to do with that time because through what is happening here with the coronavirus we are going to be forced out of the public and into our house or into some sort of shelter at a lot longer time period than what we're used to. The question is, what are we going to do and what are you going to do with that time? Number four, shutdowns will force us into our secret place with God. Again, number four, shutdowns will force us into our secret place with God. Let me add a little caveat on that. The force that the force shutdowns should force you, should move you, should move you into a voluntary status where I'm going to take the time that I've gained back because of what I'm being forced to do and I'm going to spend it with you, God. I'm not going to take that time that I have now that I'm being forced upon me and sit up and watch TV all day, catch up on movies and all that. We as Christians have got to decide in our own heart and in our mind we're going to take that time, we're going to take this pandemic, and we're going to use it to grow closer to God. That is a decision that every one of us is going to have to make. The Bible says, Psalm 91 Verses 1 through 3. Psalm 91, verses 1 through 3. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. God is saying, whatever's going on out there in this deadly pestilence, that's what's going on. Come and get under the shadow of the Almighty. Come and get underneath my wings. And to do that, that means we must take the time that we've been given and purposely, intentionally, and because we should spend that time with God. In the morning when we get up, I'm too busy. I got to get the kids up, got to get them going. I haven't had, had time to really spend my time in my devotion, spend time with you, God. You're not going to be able to say that. 
in the next, in the few weeks that's coming. You're not going to be able to say that because you're going to get some time back. Are you going to spend it with God? Are you going to spend it doing a bunch of nonsense that isn't eternal? I'll give you a second to contemplate that while I sip on my water. I have something I want to ask you. And please don't take me out of context. Don't stop the tape. Uh, cut an excerpt from what I'm saying and take out the intention about what I'm about to say. Because I'm not up here to preach and preach gloom and doom to you. I'm not up here to try to tell you all the world is coming to an end and these are signs of end times and you're going to hell. if you... That's not why I'm here. The truth of the matter is every single day that goes by, we're getting closer to end times, okay? So, yes, we are getting closer to end times, but we're getting closer to end times anyway, if you do the computation. So listen to what it is that I'm about to say, but don't take it out of context. Because I want you to think about Moses, and I want you to think about uh, Egypt and the plagues that were coming on the country, okay? So I want you to think about that and what God's responses was to that, to his people. Now, you've got that picture in your head now of all the plagues that's going on, but I want you to think about the one that turned Moses, I mean, turned the Pharaoh around, which was the plague of death. And this is where I don't want to be taken out of context because I'm not saying that about the coronavirus. I'm giving you this as an example. So follow me, would you please? And I want you to think about what God told the, the Israel his people, to do, to keep the angel of death off of their doorstep. If you remember, he said, take the blood of the lamb, spread the blood on the doorpost, and when the angel of death comes, it's going to see the blood that's on the door and pass over, hence the pass over. Okay? That's the concept I want you to have. I don't want you to have it about the coronavirus. I just want you to recall it in your memory. And so we all know from that reading that the angel of death came and we know that everybody who didn't have that on their doorpost, they died the first, the firstborn, right? Have you ever thought about, this is why I'm telling you that, have you ever thought about what those people were doing inside the house while all that was going on? What were they doing? What I want to submit to you is when that calamity, that pestilence, that death, and all that stuff that was going on in that scripture I just gave you in Exodus, I want to submit to you that the people of God inside the house were praying and seeking after God in a way they had never had before. Now, if you listen to what I'm saying and you can connect, which I know you can because you're smart people, about what I said, about what are we going to do when we're in a forced shutdown, which means we got to be inside our houses, we got to be closed up, locked up, shut up, whatever. What are we going to do with that time? I would submit to you that in this example I'm giving you, the people were inside the house and they were praying to God in a way and connecting to God in a way they never had before. You know why? Because they could hear what was going on outside the walls. And they were under the shadow of the almighty God and the protection of the almighty God, but they could still hear what was going on outside. They could hear the wailing. They could hear the crying. They could hear the panic of what was going on outside. You all got the analogy I just gave you. So as we are in our households, and we're in there, what are we doing? Are we going to be crying out to God in this time and in this season in a new way that we never had before? I believe that the year 2020 is going to be the year of our Lord. 
I believe that God is going to show up in 2020 in a way that he never has. I believe that all of this stuff that's going to get, that's going on right now is somehow and in some way, only God's time, God's way, is going to get lifted right around the resurrection weekend. Some of you might want to call that Easter. Something will happen. Times and seasons. Something will happen on Good Friday. And God will show himself strong in this time and in this season. It's just been prophesied by too many people and too much stuff. Something's going to happen. And when God has this move that he's in the process of doing, we as Christians have to ask ourselves a question. Am I with you, God? And if I'm with you, what does that look like for me? Because I can sit off in the corner and watch what you're doing. I may not even see it because we all have some sort of spiritual scales that God wants to take off of our eyes. So am I going to sit back, God, and watch this movement that you're doing and you're going to do that is going to revolutionize and change this world? Am I going to sit back and watch it and go, oh, that's nice, or am I going to be a part of it? And what is my part? I'm going to tell you right now, whatever your part is in it, you better figure it out, and God wants you to figure it out during this time of the shutdown. That and this is your time when God is trying to draw us closer to him because he's about to do something. Some people hear what I say, I'm saying and hearing what the prophets are saying and will change and will become part of the big movement that God is going to do because he's going to drop his Holy Spirit on us like he never has before. Well, pastor, what makes you say that? Well, I'll tell you, number five in my notes. And the final thing. We need to be the Acts Church gathering and preparing for a mighty movement of God. Number five, we, we need to be the Acts Church gathering and preparing for the mighty move of God. We need to be the church that when Jesus left and he said, I'm going to send my Holy Spirit, and you all know about the day of Pentecost and what they were doing, and they were establishing the church. And how did they establish the church? They didn't go and build a great big old building like the one that I'm standing in that says come here on Sunday. No. What they did was they were meeting in people's houses. They were praying. They were getting together. They were seeking God. They were seeking the Holy Spirit. And they were doing it in small groups, and they started what we would call nowadays a grassroots movement that changed the world. We're there again. We're there again. Where God is wanting to move, and he's going to want to move in a grassroots movement that's starting in somebody's living room, that's starting with two or three people who are praying and seeking God in a way they never saw them before, and the group that we would call Carmel Mountain Christian Church, the Rock Church, East County Church, all these churches that are around, I don't care what the name of the church is and what you're doing, this is your chance to get back to a grassroots movement in somebody's living room, in somebody's backyard, and seek God and his Holy Spirit in a way you never have. And when we come out of this thing, those roots will be dug so deep into the ground that the world will not be able to deny that he is still God. Be still for a, a little while and know that he is God. What we see right now and what we're living in is a time of preparation, preparing us, preparing us by the power of the Holy Spirit, preparing us for something big of God. Isaiah 61, 
verses 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 and 2. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for all the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I read that in the first person, like me. And it was as if I'm saying it, even though it's Isaiah saying it. You all need to write that scripture down. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 and 2. And you need to proclaim that as your prayer in this time and in this season of shutdowns. That God is calling me because this is the year of his favor. And the spirit of the true one and living God is not over there, is not over there, is not on my preacher, not on my deacon, not on, but the spirit of the living God is on me, is our cry during this time and this season. You ask God for it and he'll give it to you and reveal things that we all will need to know what God is doing in the next season. It's going to take all of us. I want to pray for us. And I want to pray for this message that I just gave you. So wherever you are and whatever you're doing, if you would just go ahead and bow your head and listen. Now, there's some people out there who are listening to me who do not know who the Lord God is. You don't know Jesus as your personal Savior. So what I've said has interested you. There's a spirit of God that's inside of you that is trying to wake up and you feel something and you're not really sure what what it is. Let me tell you what it is. It's God that is speaking to you and he's speaking to you right now and in this time and in this place, wherever you're sitting at your house and in your computer. Some of you are sitting in your PJs still. Some of you are dressed. Some of you have your families there. Some of you, it's just you who's sitting there and God is talking to you and he's saying to you and he's saying to your family and he's saying to everybody there, come. I sent my son Jesus for you, come. And if that's you, pray this prayer in the privacy of your own heart. Or if you just want to cry out to God because you're in your house, you can do it. And just say, Jesus, I've heard this message for today. And I feel something moving inside of me. And I believe it's you. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my life right here, right now right where I'm standing, right where I fell on my knees, right where I'm standing with my hands raised to heaven, I ask you, God, in an open invitation to come to me, God, right now. Send your son Jesus to me. I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry I didn't know. But I ask you, God, to forgive me of my sins. And now... I ask the Holy Spirit to come inside of me. Holy Spirit, come inside of me. And I will live for you from this day forward. And if you prayed that prayer, Jesus is there. He's there with you. He's touching you. He's changing your life. And the Holy Spirit is coming. And I would like to continue praying by saying, Lord, we spoke these words today that we're supposed to be still and know that you are God. And I pray, God, in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit, that those who are listening underneath the sound of my voice right now would be slayed by your power, would be slayed by your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come come right into their household, come right into their speakers, come right into their head, and come right into their heart. Right now, in the name of Jesus, that they would seek you, God, in this time in our country. God, that they will seek you 
in a way that they never have before, that, that we will open up God and we will open up our soul and our mind and our spirit to the one and true living God right here, right now. I speak life over them. And the death and the, vi the virus that's out there, I dismiss it in the name of Jesus. I cast it at the foot of the cross and speak life and health over these people. That this power of the coronavirus has no power over your people. And we will take this time, God, in the name of Jesus, to grow closer to you. And we thank you for it, for all things do work together for the good of those who love the Lord. And we are called, God, according for to your purpose. So we ask you bless this message today. We pray, God, that those who need to turn it back and hear it again will go back and pray, listen, and listen to it again. Listen to it today. Listen to it on Monday. Listen to it on Tuesday. Whatever they need to do, God, to understand your power and the control that you have and what you're trying to do in our lives. We bless you today, God. We love you today, God. We adore you. In the name of Jesus, we commit all of these things. Amen. Now, next week, I actually can't tell you what I'm going to be speaking on because I'm in a time in a season where I'm going to have to respond in many ways to what's going on in our world. And I'm ready, and I believe that God is equipping me and equipping you to hear it. So make sure that you're diligent about coming online. Make sure that your giving doesn't stop. And I'm not saying that necessarily because we just want to be money grabbers, but we just don't want you to be disobedient. If you allow that disobedient spirit in there, then off some of the other stuff, who knows? Just be obedient to what God is telling us in this time and in this period. And then next week, we'll have another message next week that will be online and on Facebook Live. We love you here at Carmel Mountain Christmas Christian Church. We're praying for you, and we say God bless you.